Hi, I'm Eagle, I'm a data scientist living in London and welcome to another video of this time series crash course. In my previous video we introduced simple exponential smoothing and in this video we're going to build upon that idea and talk about Holtz linear trend model. Particularly we'll cover what is Holtz linear trend model, why it's important and how we can use it in Python. So let's get into it. On the screen now is a Python notebook that we're going to work through that's going to tell us all about Holtz linear model. So let's first begin with recapping what is simple exponential smoothing. So exponential smoothing is where we put more weight on recent observations and less weight exponentially on more historical ones. In other words, our forecast can be biased towards being what's happened recently as opposed to what happened before, which kind of makes sense, right? Like the recent history is more of an indicator of the future than past history in most time series models. The one we introduced was simple exponential smoothing. So the simple part refers to the fact that we're not taking into account any trend or seasonality. It's very simple. It's kind of like naive in most cases. And we only forecast something called a level. And a level is basically, you can think of it as just like the general movement or the, gem, like the general state of the time series. Um, so it's not very clever in a way, right? It's kind of really simple, like its name indicates. And this model, as we saw in a previous video, led to pretty bad forecasts. It wasn't very good. Um, overall didn't really fit the data um, as well as it could have done. So one way to get around the like naive or the simple nature of the simple exponential smoothing model is by using the Holtz linear model, also known as double exponential smoothing. And kind of like what its name suggests is that it adds this linear trend component to the simple exponential smoothing model. So it's now incorporating trend as well as the level. So mathematically, what this means is that we have this overall equation we saw in the previous video, and as well as this level equation that we have in simple exponential smoothing, we also have this trend equation. And if you notice what this trend equation is doing, just visually, is that it's taking the level at the adjacent time steps and basically multiplying it by some parameter beta, which is something we're going to calculate, but most Python packages do it for us, and then adding in this other beta, which is basically an exponential smoothing, as you can see, because it's one minus of the forecasted trend component. So again, don't worry too much about the mathematics, but the way you got to think of it is basically the trend component is essentially saying what was it, what is like the sort of the, like basically the trend of the time series long term and where they're going. And it does that by basically taking into account a time step and a previous time step plus the future forecasted value of the trend. So if we forecast the trend to be decreasing, then you can see depending on how strong this beta parameter is, then the overall trend will decrease. If not, it will increase. Again, you can play around with these numbers yourself. It's more the intuition behind it, we want, we, what we really want to grasp, um, less so the deep mathematics. Because um, you can go that in your own time. It's more to really understand what the model's doing under the hood um, and to see how it's fitting different parameters. So like I said here, beta is a forecasted trend component, beta t minus one is a previous forecasted trend, and beta is the trend smoothing factor, which is what we're trying to estimate when fitting a Holt linear trend model, as well as this alpha parameter that we introduced in the previous video. And beta, like alpha, can take on values of zero to one, so it's like a multiply, right? So if it's one, you know, it's basically just a naive forecast, um, and so that's kind of the way I think of it. So as I kind of, as I kind of mentioned before, the trend equation is computed from the step-per-step -step change and level components um, and is then multiplied by the time step h, right? Um, the only thing we need to know is basically beta zero, so what is the initial forecasted value? And the way that's computed is using this formula here. So what this formula is saying is the initial b naught, so the initial forecast of the trend, is basically going to be what a valid time series is now minus to what was in the beginning. So what is like, you know, where it was it started and where it ended divided by a number of timestamps. So basically the average. So if the average is positive, then we know that the trend is positive. If it's negative, then it's um, obviously negative, right? Um, so this is a very naive way because obviously the trend can go up, down, up, down. Um, so again, this is just the initialization of it. So don't worry about this too much, but this is how you would initialize your um, trend forecast. There's also another problem or another concept I want to introduce in that the way that this is currently formulated above 
is that the trend or the forecast, sorry, will increase or decrease arbitrarily into the future. So nothing really stops it from growing or decaying indefinitely. Um, and so what we do is we add this dampening term, thai, um, to curtail the forecast and long horizons to make sure they're basically not going to explode or just completely drop to zero or negatively um, through time. And again, I'm not going to dive too much into it. It's more than intuition, but you can see here that thigh can take values between zero and one. And basically what its job is, because it can be between zero and one, is to really neglect the value of the trend. So you see here, like if thigh is like 0 0.5, then we're just halving the trend in this, in this kind of like full um, addition to the whole overall equation, as you can see from this value of yt plus h on the top equation. And as you can see, this kind of breaking up our exponential smoothing equation into different components is very useful because we can then like diagnose our model at, at different levels. Like in terms of levels, I mean in terms of two different equations, not a level equation, uh, which makes us really understand what's happening on the hood better. So it's very useful, um, this kind of decomposition of our time series into different components. Right, now let's move on to how we apply this in Python. Like I said, don't worry too much about this math because it's mostly done for us. Um, it's more to really understand kind of what it's doing differently. Like we know it's going to fit a level equation, it's going to fit a trend equation, and then it's going to add those together to give us our overall equation here. Um, again, H is a time, it's kind of like the time step. So we multiply the trend by the time step we're on. Um, again, you know, trend equation, step by step change in a, in a level. So basically, like the gradient level equation is just how much similar is the next value going to be to the previous values. Um, so if you understand that, that's kind of the order is to it. Um, and once you kind of grasp that basic intuition, we can just apply in Python um, and that's that. And then we're good to go. Right. So how we can use it in Python? Well, all we got to do is we simply call this stats and models TSA Holt Winters package. We'll discuss in the next video what Holt Winters actually is. We'll then import something called simple exponential smoothing, which we did in the last video, and also the Holt function. So we're going to plot both simple exponential smoothing and Holt. We'll then use this data called air passengers. Again, I've used this data set in all my videos. It's basically US airline passenger volume between 1950 and 1960. It's linked in the description below in the Medium notebook, that, or sorry, Medium article that's attached to this. Um, if you want to go over in your own time, again, not, don't worry too much about it. It's just there for illustrative purposes. Then we're going to split our data into train and test. Make sure we split it sequentially, which are not leaking data. Again, I'll discuss this in a future video. And then we have this plot function, which is going to plot our different models. It's going to plot the training set testing set and the forecast of the simple exponential smoothing model and the forecast of the halt model. Now we're going to fit the model. We're going to fit the simple exponential smoothing model first. That's like this. So just a dot fit optimize equals true. Again, optimize equals true just makes our model more robust and it fits the estimators better. And then we're going to do the same thing for the halt model. And again, damped trends. So we're introducing that dampening we discussed here with the thigh parameter just to make sure we have you know, not infinitely growing forecasts. And again, we did optimize it was true, and then we'll plot the result. So let's just run this cell. Might take a bit of time. And voila. So again, as we can see here, the blue is our train, the orange is our test, and then we have our two models. The red is the halt model, and then the green is the simple model. So as we can see here, the Trend model is much better, or the whole model is much better than the simple model because it's captured a trend, which makes sense because it takes that into account. Uh, and so we kind of one step closer to really understanding or really finding the best model to describe this data. One thing you can tell that we haven't done well is that is that there's no seasonal component, right? The simple model or, or the Holt model doesn't take into account these fluctuations we see at the yearly level. Um, this is something we'll discuss in the next video and how you can add seasonality now into simple exponential smoothing. But we're in the right direction as the whole model is better than the simple model clearly because it's picking up this long-term trend, whereas the simple model is basically just naive forecast, right? It's just a flat line. When in reality, the data is increasing through time, as you can see there. We can also run this dot summary method on our model. And this is like a diagnosis tool that we can just see what's really happening to our model under the hood. 
Again, we have the fitting metrics, SEC, AIC, BIC, AICC. These are just the valuation metrics we use. Don't worry too much about those. We then have what we kind of forecasted, which is the passengers. We have the, the model, ultimately it was true, the trend, which is additive. Again, additive versus multiplicative is something we discussed in a previous video in a decomposition um, uh, episode. And then we have the more important part, which is basically the, the, the parameters we fitted. So what we have here is a smoothing level. Again, this is pretty much one. So in other words, the value of the next forecast is very similar to what was in the previous one and less so to the second one or the third one. And then we also have this smoothing trend value. And we notice it's very, very low. So what this means is that the trend is not necessarily increasing or decreasing a lot. It's more that it's not very volatile. So the trend is pretty stationary through time. There's also a lot more things we can discuss here, like the dampening trend coefficients. Again, I'm not going to go over everything here, but this is just a useful tool to see what's happened to your model after it's been fit and anything you can improve upon when you're rebuilding it. Let's quickly recap of the key points discussed in this video. Simple exponential smoothing isn't very good because it doesn't take into account trend or seasonality. However, we can add trend in using Holt's linear trend model. Now shown in this Python tutorial here, this greatly improved our forecast for our basic data set. However, we're still lacking that seasonality component, which is something we'll discuss in the next video and how we can add it in. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, make sure you check out our other videos in this playlist. Also to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.